My youngest daughter is 16 and she plays varsity basketball. She has all three years, but she transferred this year to a new school. And, you know, I'm pretty sure I come off kind of crazy as as the parent. I'm not the loud screaming dad, right? But if you are in my proximity, right, I'm grumbling and I'm always complaining and in about like little details, right? Usually defensive things, but things that most parents watching their kids play aren't really focused on, right? So it seems a little crazy and intense maybe. And it's just funny how your attachment to a player and your perspective of them really alters your expectations and view on their performance, right? We're all a little jaded. We all watch things through our own lens and and have our biases. And so I I tend to also having the coach's mind to kind of focus on on the negative, right? And where other parents, oh, she played great. You know, you played, ah, did she? I don't know. Maybe my expectations are too high. Moses Moody. Let me preface this by saying, I don't expect everybody to agree with me here. I, I, the reason I'm doing this video is because the Moses Moody, Anthony Lamb rotation spot has become the hot topic for Dub Nation over the last, you know, two weeks or so, right? We can't talk about Wiseman. He, he's nowhere to be found. Day to day on that ankle, word? I'll leave that alone. Um, so what I'm getting at here with this Moses Moody Lamb thing is, is I think that the way that we were introduced to Moses Moody, lottery pick, really likable kid, the veterans liked him, flashed some really good things in, in limited time as a rookie, looked really good in summer league, right? And so our expectations and our perception of Moody has always been very positive, right? And then you counter that with Anthony Lamb, who came out of nowhere. No one really knew who he was. So not much expectation, right? And then those allegations come out as well. That's hanging over his head, and that certainly changed the perception of him. And so when you just look at these two guys, yeah, I think for everyone involved, except the Lamb family, right? But all the front office, the players, everybody would love for Moses Moody to be in that Lamb spot right now, playing 20 minutes a game and contributing. A lot of people think if he was given that opportunity, he would. And so you hear, oh, he he only gets like spot minutes, right? His leash is too tight. Why doesn't he get the same opportunity Lamb does? I think initially going into a game when Moody comes out and he usually gets a shot early, right? In the first half, that's where he's got to play well enough for that to extend into second half minutes. He gets a five minute look in the second quarter. If he doesn't perform, he's not getting that five minutes in the second half, right? Now, we've talked about the distance management issue, okay? When you look at Moses Moody, what is his greatest attribute? It's his length. He has a seven-foot-plus wingspan. And when he crowds the ball or his man, he's taking away that advantage. He's he's up, right? Your arm is bent, your elbow's bent. He, He needs to distance manage better. But there are other issues. There are, uh, there are a lot of other issues here with Moody. And again, I think there's a portion of the fan base here that just wants it so bad. And they've, they've kind of stuck their flag in the Moody sand. And it's like, regardless, they have to stick with that argument. But watch with your eyes. And I have the advantage of going back and looking at the tape the next day for my breakdowns. And what I'm seeing from Moody, it's just super disappointing, man. It really is. So distance management. He's crowding guys when he's on the ball. And, and usually what that attributes to is... He's trying to show effort. He's trying to show aggression, but that's just not the way he can do it, right? It's not successful for him. He can do it in another way. He he just be there. And uh, the other thing that he does, he takes all these false steps. Now, false steps is a term that you hear in football a lot. If you're a, a, a linebacker and you're trying to read a play at the snap and you take one step this way, but the play was that way, right? That's a false step. And so now it all it takes, it's a game of inches is what they say in football, right? Well, in basketball, it's a game of seconds, a split second, a beat, and you're late and it's too late. The way these guys shoot the talent in the league. And so Moody, when you watch him, he, especially going through screens and navigating, staying with his man, he takes these false steps 
that really uh, it just hamper him being able to stay attached and get through screens. Now he's trying to make up for that and then he leaves his feet. And it's just a very interesting trait. Jordan Poole does it offensively. We've talked about that all year. But it makes sense why Poole does it because when it, it, it's usually a trait of a player that's very quick. Right, a guy that's really quick, they can afford to do it. They, they've gotten, you know, they've gotten away with it. They can use all these inefficient steps, but they're so quick they can make up for it. Moody, with his lack of foot speed, the fact that he takes all these false steps in the wrong direction, he's dead to rights trying to stay attached to a shooter. The last thing that I think is the most disappointing is KYP. Y'all know what that is in the NBA, right? Know your personnel. And I've watched over and over again Moses sell out and jump at non-shooters and gap and not contest pure shooters. Who were they playing the other day in Washington? It was uh, DeLon Wright shoots 20% from three. Moses checks in the game and he's helping down. He goes to close out, just leap, completely sells out in the air, fly by DeLon, puts it into the puts it down into the paint and draws a foul. And right away you say, you, Dante turns to him. He's like, hey, hey. And, and that's just an, a recent example. This has happened all year long where you're like, Moo, did you, did you read the scouting report? I get he's a young guy. He doesn't know these guys yet. He hasn't matched up against them a whole lot. But everything we've been told about Moses is, Moo, I'm getting on my Kendrick here, uh, is that he's, he's smart, hardworking, mature, and so I would expect him to be able to follow the scouting report. So that's three things that's just killing him defensively. The distance management, the false steps, and then not sticking to the scouting report and understanding the personnel you're matching up against. Now, offensively, yeah, he shoots the three pretty good, right? Like, he he can do that. It, he's, not as, he's not so good offensively that it can justify all these errors defensively. You know what I'm saying? Now, <clears throat> Lamb, he's limited, right? And maybe, so I, 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 I started this by saying like a lot of you, it's that you've just, your heart is set on Moody. And so you're kind of blinded to his flaws. Perhaps my expectations from Lamb are so low that I'm just overly surprised in what he, what he is capable of. There is no doubt he's limited physically, right? He's a six foot seven power forward who doesn't play vertically. But Lamb, it, it, not all these mistakes are created equal. I know late in the game, I think it was Washington, He Lamb has some trouble switching. There's times where he doesn't really understand, like with Draymond, you know, if you're a young player on the Warriors, you have to understand on the perimeter, Draymond always wants to drop and make you switch and have you switch so he can drop low and, and rotate and help and be the all-time help defender that he is, right? Draymond doesn't want to switch up high. He wants, to, he wants you to do it so he can fall back and, and play safety, right? And you've seen Lamb struggle with some switches. But other than that, he's been way more fundamentally sound than Moses Moody as far as closeouts, KYP. He's shooting 42%. Now you're seeing him put it down, get to the line and rumble. I don't even think it's close. And I, I, I say that objectively, understanding, hey, man, maybe my bias leans a little towards Lamb just because it's like, where, who did this guy come from, right? I had no expectations from him. But I think if you actually watch the two on the court and it, try to do it objectively, it hasn't even been close. And again, I say that coming from a place of, yeah, I would love for it to be moody, but I just don't think that it, it, it I don't think that this, this spot of minutes here that Dub Nation is arguing over is, is even close. That's my opinion on the situation. And, you know, Moody's just, he's been... Listen, I'll, I'll red pill you right now. There, there is an argument to be made. In my opinion, Moody has been more disappointing than James Wiseman. Wiseman at least has excuses. Moody, he's been healthy the whole time. I'm sure he's got chipped up here and there. But like, dude, it, it's disappointing. And so I say all that to say, let's trade Moses. <laughs> Maybe a new a new setting for him. I don't know, man. I, I I finished up yesterday's breakdown talking about the possibilities of a trade, and it seems as though, um, you know, I, I who knows who knows it, it, it's up in the air, the trade market and all that stuff. I think that even if it was a minor move, it might help reinvigorate the vets who are just kind of dragging right now. Like Steph dragged into that forty point game the other day. If you if you if you're watching the details, he was making a lot of mistakes too helping off the strong, a lot of stuff, 
right? And so it may reinvigorate them. So I'll throw two names out for you. I don't know how realistic they are. Darius Baisley, Oklahoma City Thunder, final year of his contract, 6'9", 220, big athletic toolsy wing who they've been developing for a while. I just like his aggression. You know, I don't know if he necessarily fits the Warriors system offensively, but that's not what you're getting him for. You're getting him as a big wing defender, another guy to add that I think right now he can defend. And then you you, you put him into this infrastructure and you hope that, uh, you know, he, he has the IQ and, and, and fit in other ways. Uh, I saw it was ESPN who did this trade trade. Uh, every team's trade targets or what trades they should make. And when I saw him in some of those for OKC, I was like, well, if they're willing to give him up for a second round pick, I, why not Moses? Let him, you know, they love to develop in Oklahoma City and maybe Moody can get a better shot there. I'm not saying his career is over, but he, I think it's no denying he's been super disappointing. He's not just, I guess my point is with Moses is, Kerr's not just burying him. I don't think that that's the case. You know, it, it's it's when he gets out there, he makes too many mistakes in too short of time to extend his minutes each time. But uh, again, maybe in, in a format with Oklahoma City, the way uh, the Williams kid is performing and they have, you know, it's just an option. Darius Baisley, I like his motor. I like his length. And I think he could be a big wing defender along the same ilk as Baisley. I know y'all have been thinking about this. A lot of people have DM me this name, Cam Reddish. Cam Reddish. Duke, part of that that big three at Duke, right? Uh, fell out in Atlanta. Knicks traded for him, and now the, he doesn't play. The, the Knicks have all they're like, hey, two two second rounders, come get him. And so that is a bit alarming when you look at a kid that talented. Now, two spots have been just like thanks, but no thanks, right? So I don't know if it's a character issue. You know what I mean? The talent is certainly there. And hey, if you could take, I guess you know. It's a sunken cop. Moody was a lottery pick, but so was Cam Reddish, right? So I don't think you can look at it like that. You have to look at what their value is right now. Perhaps New York would like a swing at Moody or, you know, you give up the second round pick and then you bring Cam Reddish into this infrastructure and you hope you can put the Wiggins touch on him. Both Baisley and, and, and Cam Reddish. Not to the extent of Andrew Wiggins, Maple Jordan, the number one pick. They're not that talented, right? But on a lesser level, as a, as a sixth, seventh, eighth guy, a guy that, hey, buy into our system, defend. Steph's gravity is going to get you easy shots. Run the floor. You're going to get dunks and just be a part of this. Be a part of winning. Be a part of the rock stars that the Warriors have are when you become a Warrior. So those are two names that I'll throw out. Mood, again, it's it, it's it's not, it's the same thing with the Wiseman thing, dude. I From the jump, I've been rooting for him. You have to understand why in the world would I want Moody to be a bust and, 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 not, and not play? It would be great. It, of course, you want your lottery picks to succeed and, and show something, but that's that's not what I'm seeing on tape, man. And so that's my take. What do y'all think? Let me let me guess. Half of you going to say, no, Moody just needs 20 minutes. He's twice the talent. I heard, shout out uh, MT, Marcus Thompson, the OG covering the Warriors. You know, I heard their pod the other day. He goes, well, Moody's the, the, the more talented player, right? Is he? Is he? I don't know if he is. I'm, I'm not seeing it. I think Lamb is here to stay, but uh, either way, I just want to win, baby. Hit that like, share, and subscribe. I'm out, y'all.